Please welcome on to the stage me. Yeah. 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 People, if only the good die young, then your nan's a cunt. That's how I'm starting the show, because I have made a mistake this year. I've called the title too nice. Previous shows, I've had swear words in the title to keep assholes out. So like previous shows have been called things like we all die cunts, or fuck you and fuck your beliefs. Last year was genocidal liberal. If you can't get past the title, you're not gonna like the show. This year, political and correct. I fucked up somewhere along the lines there. Too nice. Means I'm getting audiences who are assholes come in thinking this is going to be some form of Radio 4 special. Where they get to laugh along and feel superior about themselves. And come, <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> I don't offer you that. I am a dark, bleak, uncomfortable political comedian. And I've given you all hints. Did anyone get a flyer? Of course not, why would you? <laughs> Only paying them £20 an hour, why would anyone get one? <laughs> Must be making a fucking nest or something. <laughs> I'll tell you what they're not doing, giving them out to people. But I gave hints and tips on the poster, if you had a look. Like here, it says three shades darker than Frankie Boyle. And from the National, that gave you a fucking clue. Absolutely merciless, he is terrific. The Scotsman, giving you ideas. That picture there, that's of a dead baby. <laughs> I'll let you fucking know. I've had to kick out talkers. I've had to kick out fucking transphobes. And I've had to explain to someone what subjective meant. <laughs> Do you know how bad a show's going when you have to explain what subjective means to a fellow human being? So, I'll do a contract with you now. I have explained, I have explained to you what the show is. If you wish to stay, brilliant. This is the amnesty for if you wish to fuck off. <laughs> That's the offer. If you fuck off now, absolutely fine. I will be, I'll be courteous towards you. If at some point during the hour you attempt to fuck off, I'm gonna rip you a new asshole. I'm gonna undo the work your therapist did. That is the warning. Do we all agree? Yes, beautiful. Beautiful. My advice for this show is if you've got a happy memory, hold on to it. <laughs> Throughout the show, just hold on to it, you know? But this is the thing, it's okay to be sad sometimes. It's okay to be lonely sometimes. Even I get lonely, and I know you're looking at me going, what? <laughs> you? Never. But you're wearing a hat. <laughs> Even I get lonely. Sometimes when I'm feeling particularly lonely, I sit on my arm until it goes dead. <laughs> and then I get jealous of my arm. I don't do wanking jokes, thank you very much. Suicide jokes, I will say, I wouldn't kill myself. I wouldn't. Have you seen the fucking cost of suicide now? Five P for a plastic bag. It's even worth it. Ridiculous. Anyway, shall we start the show? Hope is horseshit, reality is pain. Let's have fun. Is everyone drinking, by the way? Absolutely. Good, yeah, you fucking need to. I used, I used to uh, drink to stop the voices. Anyone else? No, it doesn't work. No, I don't. Now we're just drinking until we all agree. I, I, I like you, you're good. You came to the previous show and that was wonderful. Oh, Do you understand that unlike that show, this isn't as conversational. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's gonna seem like we're having a conversation, but it's actually quite a long monologue. <laughs> That's very much how this works. Get on with it then. Oh. oh. I'll be honest, when I wrote this, you weren't involved as much. 
But next year, we're going to do a double act. You know, we can call it Everyone's a Cunt. And look, I brought an example. <laughs> Oh. Hush now, hush now, you know, it's all good. All I need is your laughter or silence, nothing more. <laughs> nothing more. So, 14 years of Tory rule over. Are we happy? Yeah. Fantastic! 14 years, that's how long it took. 14 years of an attempted destruction of the country before enough people in this pisshole of a fucking place decided that's probably enough. And 20% of people still voted for him. What more did Sunak have to do? Did he have to go door to door teabagging people? <laughs> Democracy is a wonderful idea ruined by people. This is the truth of it. 14 years. Like the thing is, I understood the 2010 vote. Everyone remember the 2010 vote? Yeah. I understood why people voted for the Tories then. Delightfully, not enough to give them a majority. That was fun. <laughs> But I got it, I understood it, because what did you have? 08, you had the financial crash. 09, you had the expenses scandal, when we all found out that MPs treated us like petty cash. <laughs> and then you had Gordon Brown call a bigot a bigot. <laughs> and we fucking hated that. <laughs> oh, how dare you point out a bigotry. Luckily, us bending over for bigots for the past 14 years hasn't come back to bite us in the arse at all, has it? As the Nazis fucking march. The worst bit about a far right coming back is the more people tell me, well, I think you'll find that uh, a swastika is actually a Hindu symbol for hope. <laughs> like, yeah, but the Nazis were quite hopeful, weren't they? I want to see if the Hindus want it back. I don't reckon they would. <laughs> and I'll be honest, when I'm walking down the street and I see a bunch of fat white arseholes with fucking swastikas, I'm not thinking, ooh, Hindus. <laughs> 2010, I understood the vote. 2015, I was getting a bit suspicious. Because 2015, we gave them a majority. This is after five years of austerity and we gave them a majority. I'll explain to you what austerity is if you don't know. We all know that the government have bent us over and are fucking us in the arse. We know this, we can feel it. Now the government is fucking us over and over and over and over and over again. But the government is wearing a condom. <laughs> made of welfare and public services. This is to make sure we don't get any of those government STIs, you know, like homelessness and fucking death. And so the government is fucking us in the arse, hammering and hammering and hammering. And over time, the condom's getting thinner and thinner. And they're fucking us and fucking us and fucking us. And then the condom breaks. <laughs> now, what you should do at this point is stop and get another condom. <laughs> government didn't do this, though. The government just fucking bareback riding us, hammering and going and going and going. We're biting a pillow at this point, you know? <laughs> hammering and hammering and hammering. And then our asshole prolapses. <laughs> <laughs> and that's austerity. <laughs> it's not the Guardian definition of austerity. <laughs> but I'm not the fucking Guardian. <laughs> that was 2015. Then 2017, we voted for them a fucking again! Again! This was after Brexit, when David Cameron looked at us all like swine fucked us and then pissed off for his post-coital cigarette. <laughs> Brexit, stupidity's apartheid. <laughs> Don't think about that. <laughs> just hearing it quickly, that sounds very intelligent, but if you think about it, that is just two words next to each other. <laughs> That's all that is. Brexit, when half of the country got to learn what it was to date Boris Johnson and Nigel Farage. You know, you just get cheated on and lied to. <laughs> Oh, say, Farage is the type of man that if he ever got cancer, I'd stop all the research until I was sure he was dead. <laughs> not a fan. Not a fan. It was 2017. And then 2019, again! We voted for them again! Two years of Brexit negotiations based on the improvisation suggestion of leave. <laughs> and like all improv, it was shit. <laughs> 
And then collectively, we looked at Boris Johnson and said, he can save us. <laughs> like looking at a horse's cock and saying, that can fit. <laughs> But it just ends in tragedy. <laughs> With a gaping hole. And that is a deficit joke and you cannot prove me wrong. It's a fucking deficit joke. <laughs> so then we get to 2024, where Rishi Sunak called the longest election that there's ever been in the rain surrounded by the world media, all of whom had umbrellas. <laughs> I've seen that clip a thousand times trying to work out exactly when he realised that an umbrella was a thing. <laughs> or was it when he went out of number 10 and saw raindrops? Was it when he went back in, looked in the mirror and said to himself, I do not remember sweating? <laughs> Was it two minutes later when Starmer did a speech indoors? <laughs> so we had a six week election where Rishi Sunak did a speech at the Titanic Quadrant. And I had to work out who was directing the Tory fucking uh, campaign this year. Turns out it was Paddy Power. <laughs> you had Ed Davey who had to make a tit of himself for attention. You had Farage, who had to do fuck all for attention. I was actually so happy with the result that the Lib Dems got. I thought that was fantastic, because I was starting to think that I had um, imagined the Lib Dems. <laughs> Ed Davey does have the vibe of an imaginary friend, doesn't he? <laughs> no. Nigel Farage has the vibe of a repressed memory. <laughs> Every time I see him on TV, I think, no, uncle, no! <laughs> John Sweeney had to do his very best to not dress up as Nicola Sturgeon. Keir Starmer couldn't believe his luck, and the Greens were also there. <laughs> Can't say they weren't. They were there. I like the Greens. I just wish once, just once, their manifesto didn't read like it came from a 19-year-old girl just got back from a gap year who wants to be known as Moonflower. <laughs> no. That'd be nice. <laughs> Did we all go through the manifestos? <laughs> oh, I fucking did. That was a waste of time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Laminated lies. The Reform Party manifesto was closer to a vision board than reality. The Tory Party manifesto was basically just going, listen, if I ever find out who's been in charge for the first 14 years, I'll fucking have them. <laughs> the Labour uh, manifesto was just, who else? <laughs> Who else? And I went through them all and it's pointless because they mean nothing now. My time would have been better spent self-harming. <laughs> That's how pointless that was. The biggest shock of all of the election was finding out how few people knew we had first passed the post. That was a shock to fucking everyone, wasn't it? Going, ah, oh, how did we get this result? <laughs> It's, under it's understandable because we've only had first past the post since um, 1884. Hardly any time for those who claim sentience in this country to understand our electoral system. So now we want PR. Everyone wants PR. PR, 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 PR. Wonderful. We should have PR. I would argue what type? Slightly more than two letters would be lovely because there are a lot of types of PR and no one's saying which one. So let's have a look. What, what would you like? Would you like something like party list PR? Sounds fun. Got party in it. Woo! <laughs> Mixed member proportional representation. Sexy. <laughs> Single transferable vote. Sounds... Collective party vote. Another party. Beautiful times. 
single member proportional representation. I will say some of them I have made up. <laughs> the problem is I do not think there are enough people in the country that are able to tell me the ones I've made up for me to think that democracy is a good idea at all. Democracy is a wonderful idea ruined by people. a lot of fucking problems going on in the world. Let's do a little, let's do a little, um, uh, a little, a little joke while we're here. A little, a little joke. <laughs> yeah, a little, a little joke. There was a study that came out a little while ago that said that women between the ages of 18 and 24 suffer from more anxiety and depression than men of the same age. It's also true to say that men of the same age kill themselves more. It does go to show men have that can-do attitude that women lack. <laughs> We do have a, uh, a lot of problems that we're currently facing. One of the major ones that we've not, not spoken about as much is uh, low birth rates mixed with old people not dying when they should. <laughs> Focus on old person, tap watch. I apologise, I'm aiming this little bit at you. I do apologise, but your wife, I assume your wife, looks lovely and I don't want to aim it at her. Is that okay? <laughs> Beautiful. Um, this this uh, particular problem has been taken up by the far right instead because it got two of the things that they absolutely love. The Great Replacement Theory and their hatred of women having anything that even closely resembles freedoms. <laughs> so the likes of Musk, Peterson, Jacob Rees-Mogg talk about it all the time and are working collectively to solve it by having 20 unloved and emotionally stunted children between them. <laughs> this is a worldwide problem. By the end of the century, it is expected that 97% of all countries are expected to be below the replacement rate of 2.1 children per woman needed to maintain a population. So like the UK, our replacement rate, 1.5. South Korea, 0 0.8. China, 1.1. China are now setting policies to get people to have more children. The irony of it! There are dead babies turning in their ditches. <laughs> over in Japan, over in Japan, 25% of the population is over 65. The world is aging. We have a real fear of a global shortage of Werther's Originals. <laughs> I'll be honest, there's not going to be another show up here that does a dead baby joke followed by a word with original punchline. <laughs> That's not going to happen. <laughs> the problem with old people not dying and low birth rates, what you get is you get an aged population. You know, focus on old person, can't watch. <laughs> An aging population creates a stagnation uh, in uh, culture. Now, you may be thinking that we currently have a stagnation in culture, but you wait. Brat energy, or brat summer, or brat whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> that will seem like the return of the Renaissance. <laughs> and not the death knell of humanity that it so clearly is. And what else will change is that our politics will be even more for the old, even more than it is now. And the reason that it is now is because 80% of pensioners vote. That's compared to 50% uh, of 20 odd year olds. So if the young want to change it, they actually have to vote. They have to get off their phones, stop trying to choke people in bed every five fucking seconds. <laughs> Stop coming up with new energies every two seconds. Those are the way to hide from the fact that you can't... Are you okay? Are, are you... You made them feel uncomfortable. Are you, are you choking people in bed? Because don't. You need trust for that. No. You need to understand people's names. 
You have to learn where their, uh, where their threshold is. You need to know how to choke. This is the thing. It's not like fucking rear naked. You don't go into a suplex. That's not how it works. You're not the fucking undertaker. Choke slamming people down, no. Went to be a bit of enjoyment, a bit of fun. You're too young, stop it. Stop choking people for fuck's sake. <laughs> Oh, that's, a, that's an incredibly weird bit. <laughs> that, bit, that bit doesn't normally go that way, I will be honest. <laughs> I, I, when, I, when, I, when I wrote this bit, at no point did I think, I know what, that choking bit's gonna go on for a while. <laughs> Just get a safe word first, you'll be fine. But if you're choking them with a safe word, they're gonna have it harder to say, it's gonna gurgle. Get them to gurgle the safe word so you know what they're trying to say. That's how you do it, that's how you do that. To make sure you can hear it when they're fucking straining. Maybe learn it in Morse codes. You know? If they can't. I mean, we're solving shit, ain't we? We're solving shit. Uh, back to the back, back to the show. <laughs> this, is, this, this this rhythm's gone off. Oh, uh, old people, young people, vote, go out, vote. We may, we may have. <laughs> let's get where we were. Um. We may have to start taking away votes for the old. Oh. Um, I would set a new law that if you can't survive the winter on your own, you don't get a say. <laughs> Be my... Uh. The problem is that people, well, uh, women, <laughs> they're not having as many or any children. Of course, the far right know the reasons for this. It's because the younger generations are selfish. No one has a gender anymore. Women selfishly believe themselves to be more than just fleshy Tupperware for men to hold their jizz in for nine months. <laughs> the bitches, the fucking bitches, how dare they? One of the things that the far right miss in their conclusions, of course, is that the fact that the world is shit. I was always taught not to invite a loved one into a burning building. <laughs> I was taught, man. And we've got a fucking uh, financial crisis at the moment, a cost of living crisis. For years, the right have told have told people to only have children when they can afford it. And now, families are holding back until there's a chance they can afford it. And now they're selfish. Pick a fucking lane. I need to know who to hate. <laughs> and this is all before the crux of the matter that children are shit. <laughs> uh, do you actually like children? I've never met a parent that likes their own children. <laughs> The only thing, I mean, you're, you're, you're disappointed now because you've known that she's choking everyone. The worst thing I'm not that disappointed. Ah, <laughs> as long as she's doing it safe. That's it. I will say, do wear a condom. I was reading in the paper today, gonorrhea. It's absolutely going off on the tracks. Protect yourself. Otherwise, that's how humanity is going to die. Super gonorrhea and we're just going to, our final moment will just be rutting and rotting and you don't want that, do you? <laughs> it's not a bit of skin falling off as you try to go for a final <laughs> orgasm before death. <laughs> Where the fuck was I? Women? You know, this is after the women bit. This is the, fi <laughs> this is the financial... <laughs> This is the financial crisis, the financial, the pick a lane, pick a lane, selfish, selfish, pick a fucking lane. Um, yes, yes, of course, of course. There are things that countries are doing to try to stop this. 
uh, like um, uh, tax, uh, tax breaks for families. We're not doing that in Britain, of course. We literally have a two-child cap. And if you're a single parent, good luck, because you're taxed more. <laughs> one parent on 80K, it's taxed more than two parents on 40K, because we are one of the only countries in the world to means test uh, child benefits. So you have unaffordable housing, expensive childcare, a society no longer built with children in mind. You've got a crumbling uh, school system and a lack of teachers. So you get to be in a house you can't afford, with a family with nothing for your child to do except the rot of social media, as you get into more debt to get them looked after when they're not in one of their uh, schools where you have to pay for the fucking toilet paper. <laughs> Hope to God that a millionaire sportsman is able to guilt other millionaires into paying your child's lunch. <laughs> All whilst they have to dodge the fucking debris from their crumbling buildings. <laughs> But these far-right, incel, parasitic pricks are right. Women should spend more time on their backs getting pumped like a lilo on the first day of summer. <laughs> and old people are still clinging on. <laughs> listen, listen. We've all met old people we like. <laughs> this isn't about that. This isn't about that. The problem is, is that when they were young, they fucked it. And now we have to try to find a way to improve things. We may have to stop curing things. <laughs> you know, just, just until we get a functioning NHS back. <laughs> We may have to start bringing back some diseases. <laughs> At the minimum, we should start buttering some stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and older people, this is for you as well. You need young people just so you can retire. Our state pension is, is a Ponzi scheme. You're not paying for yourself, you're paying for those who have already retired. That should be the slogan to have more people have children. Have more children so you can fucking stop. <laughs> and why are the far right not doing anything about this? Why are the far right not arguing for cheaper uh, uh, taxes for families? for cheaper childcare, because they don't care. They're not there for that. They're not trying to improve the world. They're trying to control women and push the great replacement theory. If the likes of Jacob Rees-Mogg cared, he would do more for the four million children we have in poverty than just being anti-abortion and pro-suffering. Do we have any uh, anti-vaxxers in? <laughs> oh, of course not, they're dead. <laughs> I don't get anti-vaxxers. I don't get not vaccinating your child, you know. To me, not vaccinating your child is the coward's abortion. <laughs> like saying, yeah, listen, I, I don't want to keep it, but I do want it to suffer first. Seems a bit cruel to me. Anyway, we're coming up to the section I call the dark bit of the show. <laughs> <laughs> this, was, this, was a, this was a light little tipple to get us in. It's about to get rather rough. <laughs> we have seen the, uh, the rise of the far right recently. We saw the riots and all of this legitimate concerns. Tell you what, I've got a legitimate concern. I set fire to a hotel. <laughs> set, listen, if you've got a legitimate concern and you set fire to a library, you can't spell either word. You're a fucking idiot. Tommy Robinson is the type of man that if he was the last disabled person on earth, I would build more stairs. 
But they're going along going, I, I tell you, it's for the kids. It's for the children. It's not, it's racism. That's all that it is. It is racism and you know it is because of how they treat grooming gangs differently. If it's a, a British white grooming gang, they don't give a fuck, it's not even in our papers. But at the moment they've got a tan, oh, that's the reason to fucking kill. They don't give a shit. You've got a poor girl there being attacked, running thing. You've got a far right there coming in going, oh, don't worry, we'll, we'll protect you, we'll protect you, we'll get that muzzle bastard. We'll get them, we'll fucking get them. Now, actually, I was attacked by a white British grooming gang. You lucky bitch. <laughs> that is the best of British spunk you've got in you. How dare you complain? You best start learning to walk on your hand so you don't spill a drop. <laughs> anyway, Israel Palestine. <laughs> This is the next bit. Fun bit. Um, what happy memory are you holding on to? <laughs> you got one? Good, good, good. It's important, it's important. Um, now, before I start this bit, when I say uh, the Israeli government, I mean the Israeli government. So when I say the Israeli government, I mean the Israeli government. So when I say the Israeli government, I mean the Israeli government. I don't mean Jews. I don't mean Zionists. I don't mean fucking lizard men. I mean the exact words I am saying. And I have to say that because it turns out humanity is fucking stupid. I have no fucking conception of anything. You can do something and say, oh, actually, I'm not a massive fan of Corbyn. So, you're a capitalist? No, because that's not how sentences work. <laughs> so when I say, and this is only my opinion, but it looks like, my opinion, it looks like the Israeli government are attempting to eradicate Palestine. It's only what it looks like, and I'm only saying that because of the words they use and their actions. <laughs> if it wasn't for that, I'd be on the fence. <laughs> if ministers weren't saying, we want to eradicate Palestine, and then we're bombing Palestine, I'd be going, hmm, listen, I'm no Columbo. <laughs> it just seems, seems like it. I don't understand some of the uh, arguments that the Israeli government uh, are using. Like, well, I think you'll find that Hamas are using human shields. Don't shoot then. <laughs> Have we all seen Die Hard? <laughs> it would be a very different ending as if at the end of it, John McClane shot his fucking wife. <laughs> And have you seen who's been dying over in Palestine? It's fucking babies and children. I tell you what they make, shit human shields. How fast are these Hamas terrorist bastards that they're able to stop bullets? You got a, you got a, Hamas, terrorist, a Hamas terrorist bastard in front of the IDF going, fucking hit me now, mate, fucking hit me now. Poor baby flinging around everywhere. Got the, I thought the idea was gonna be a good shot. You can't shoot past a baby. Just there go bang, 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 fuck me, is this baby magnetic? <laughs> of course, Israel are not trying to do a genocide, they're just trying to make sure that Palestine is open plan. Can't, you, listen, you can't argue about settlement when there's nothing there, can you? Smart. Uh, how many people have been on a pro-Palestine march here? Couple of years? How many people have been on a pro-peace in Sudan march? <laughs> None of them, because there hasn't been one. Which is strange, because Sudan got everything that the left love. Everything that they love. Rape being used in war? Oh, they fucking love talking about that. And is that in there? Genocide? Fantastic. Oh, wonderful. Not so much as a fucking hashtag, though. A little while ago over in Sudan, and I, I, don't, I don't know why we don't care about Sudan, me white fucking finger can't quite place it. Um, 
We put a little while ago over in Sudan, there was a protest where the Sudanese military shot the protesters. Of course, the military said, listen, we did use live rounds, but we only shot in the air. Judging by the photos, it turns out that those Sudanese can fucking fly. <laughs> Christ. Thought they would have won more medals. <laughs> I haven't seen a march for uh, Yemen in years. What happened? That's still going on. And I'll tell you what, we sell a lot more weapons to Saudi Arabia than we do to Israel. We, 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 uh, we, spend, we sell something like 500 million pounds worth of weapons to Israel every year. We sell billions, fucking billions to Saudi Arabia. But again, Saudi Arabia are not trying to genocide the Yemenis, are they? They're just trying to make sure that the Yemenis are beach body ready. <laughs> Say what you like about hunger, but a moment on the lips. <laughs> and we've all seen those photos, you know, we can see the ribs, gaunt faces, fuckable, isn't they? Fuckable. <laughs> too far, that bit. <laughs> that bit may have been a bit too far. May have been a bit, may have been a bit, may have been a bit too far. <laughs> Getting being told that we're being invaded. Hear this? Oh, we're being invaded. Like Suella Braverman loves saying it, you know. Only woman who's ever looked at Pretty Patel and gone, you woke bitch. <laughs> Says we're being invaded. So what a shit fucking invasion this is. How poorly planned is this? You telling me in a war zone over in the fucking Middle East, they're dodging bombs, run into a fucking tent, go, listen, it's time, we're going to do it. What are we going to do? We're going to invade the UK, finally, fucking finally, we'll get those pricks. Don't worry, I've got a fantastic plan, beautiful, beautiful Tennessee, listen to me, okay. Now, bear with me, it's going to sound strange. What we're going to do is we're going to get enough of us to drown in the channel. And then hopefully, a sense of ennui will fall over the UK and they'll just surrender. How many of us have to die? Turns out, more than we'd be comfortable with. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Poverty's a big problem at the moment, isn't it? You know, got 14 million people in poverty, 4 million children in poverty. Once again, haven't seen a march! <laughs> just, oh God, humanity just needs wiping out. <laughs> um, I've got solutions. First thing with poverty, of course, is we have to change how we talk about it. Because what do we We say? Uh, absolute poverty, relative poverty, extreme poverty. Make it very complicated. Because normally when a politician says uh, absolute poverty, that absolute poverty is going down. That tends to mean that relative poverty is going up. That's how it works. And I think relative poverty has something to do with where the fucking moon is in the air. <laughs> so we change it. Make it simple. Make sure we understand. So instead of relative, absolute and uh, extreme, fucked, proper fucked, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ and holy fucking hell, now that's what I call poverty 2024. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> we'd understand it, wouldn't we? We'd understand it a lot more. A few years, a few months down the line, Starmer would be there. How's the economy going? Well, we've got fewer people, Jesus fucking Christ. More people are proper fucked, but fewer people fucked. Lovely. We all understand it. We all understand it. I think, I've got, I think if we're going to improve the country, if we're going to improve the world, nothing seems as simple to me as a wealth tax. We need a wealth tax. We fucking yearn for a wealth tax. It feels like we are all forced indoors while the rich are outside singing and dancing in the pissing rain. And we can all hear them and we can all see them and we want to go out there and we say, no, you can't. They're special. You wouldn't know what to do. So we're forced inside with our fucking faces pushed up against the window, watching them, hearing them singing, knowing, bloody knowing that they're all singing out of tune. Because <laughs> we've been told that they are special. And the more you're told something, the more you start to believe it. Tax, our tax system is unfair. It taxes uh, uh, wages vastly more than it taxes capital. Which just so happens to be where the rich keep most of their assets. <gasps> Imagine it. <laughs> 
Wages have not gone up in real terms in 15 years. 15, imagine being in a marriage that has stagnated for 15 years. You looking into the eyes of the person that you love saying, I love you, but in real terms, it is so much less. <laughs> Your partner asking you, do you love me more now? You having to be honest, I have to love you more now even as you depreciate in front of my very eyes. <laughs> you would kill them, yourself, and the dog you got so you had something you could pretend actually loved you. Now, how about those assets, boys and girls? Do we think they've gone down? No. As an example, London house prices have gone up 38% after inflation since 2010. That marriage is thriving. She's got new tits. <laughs> he goes down on her because he wants to. So <laughs> well that fucking marriage is going, yet landlords still put their rents up. And they have to tell me that they're doing me a favour, charging me £900 a month for a room in a fucking four bed, one bathroom, no living room shithole, with two other people in every pissing room. Kill all landlords while we're here. Kill them all, kill them again, bring them back to life and fuck them down a well. <laughs> every landlord and estate agent should be given dysentery forced to live in one of their greed squalors where the bathroom is always occupied so they sit in the same room with the same four walls and drown in their own shit. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> FTSE 100 is uh, up around 58% after dividends. Uh, what dividends are is that's the money that companies give their shareholders once they've squeezed the last tier out of customers. <laughs> whilst telling them that they don't actually have enough money to improve the service. <laughs> and with this, real average weekly wages have not gone up since 2006. It's a time, and this is true, when I was kicked out by both my mum and dad. Two separate places. And I still had something that kind of looked from the outside like hope. It wasn't hope, it was youth. <laughs> when I was young, uh, they used to say to me, Listen, Ashley, you're very angry, don't worry, you'll grow out of it. <laughs> Fucking didn't. <laughs> if anything, I'm vastly worse. <laughs> Wealth inequality has not dropped in 17 years. And the only reason we know it's 17 years is because that is when the Office of National Statistics first started looking. We've had a government since 1801. That means it took 206 years for anyone in the government went, hey, what about those fucking poor people? Well, that has been a lot of uh, a lot of information in a short space. So let's simplify it. For every ten pound of new wealth created, the rich, top ten percent, get four pounds. One pound goes to, drum roll, please, the bottom half, half. Do you know how big that is? If you've got two halves, that's a fucking hole. That's how big a half is. That's how big it is. It feels like we're in a Dickensian novel where the only happy ending is the fact that these greedy bastards will also die. And sometimes all you've got is the death of others to keep yourself sane. Tax hits the poorest hardest. This is what happens. You'll have people say to you, I think we'll find, I think we'll find, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, I think we'll find, I think we'll find. <laughs> just a little point, just a little point, just a little point. Um, 60% of uh, all income tax is actually paid by the top 10%. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, that means you'll pay too much. 
How? How is it possible that you are able to spend and pay that amount of tax and still wealth inequality has not shifted since the last time Thatcher came? <laughs> and I didn't have to use that imagery. I just wanted to make sure that my audience had to picture Thatcher hammering away on herself. Because I do not want my audiences to be happy. I would even get rid of, I would, I'd bring in a wealth tax and get rid of inheritance tax. The rich fucking hate inheritance tax, don't they? They fucking hate it. Almost like they've got the money for it to affect them. I say affect them. Last year, three to four percent of the 120 billion pounds in gifts and inheritance was actually taxed. Three to four percent. And they still want to get rid of it. This is how Winnie the Pooh, pot of honey, these greedy fucks are. And I'll tell you, the most fucking paint me pink, call me a cunt madness <laughs> of it all is that whether on purpose or by sheer luck, Everything that the government and the Bank of England have done for the past 14 years, 15 years, has only made the rich richer. We had quantitative easing coming in in 08 as a way to stimulate the economy and then kept for 10 years afterwards uh, as, uh, uh, to paper over the cracks of an inadequate government, like foundation on a bruise. <laughs> At the same time, George Osborne who has a podcast talking about the economy. <laughs> George Osborne has a fucking podcast talking about the economy. <laughs> hey gang, gang team, <laughs> team friends, friends. Um, and also, have you heard of the, uh, the new uh, podcast by Lucy Letby? Babies <laughs> cry in the funniest ways. <laughs> Bit rough that bit, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Lucy me. what a shit serial killer. <laughs> hey, if all you can do is kill children, babies, you're shit, ain't you? I could kill a baby. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> I could. <laughs> Wealth just goes up. This is the thing. So. What happened after George Osborne cut the capital gains tax to 20%, which is half of the highest rate of income tax? Which means that last year, millionaire Rishi Sunak was able to pay uh, a collective tax rate of 35%. I paid 33%, and this is my career. <laughs> Wealth does just go up. You don't need to be good. You don't need to be talented. Throughout history, wealth has always gone up higher than wages. The only time that it did not happen was between 1913 and 2012. That was the only time in this country that economic growth exceeded the rate of return on capital. And that stopped because we did austerity, because we privatized, and then the economic growth fell out of its arse. I wish it was just about money. I wish it was just about money, but it's not. It's what wealth can give you. Opportunity, social power, security, independence. That's what it offers you. That is what taken away from so many people in this country. We need to change our tax system to stop hitting the poorest hardest. Council tax. The burden of council tax is 10 times higher for poor people than it is for rich. And at that point, you just have to say, fucking well done. Game recognises game, my friend. You played a blinder. As an example, uh, Burnley, where they've got cheaper uh, housing costs. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the houses cost less. Uh, they pay uh, a tax burden, council tax of 1.1%. Kensington and Chelsea, 0.1%. That's basically tax free. It's, and why? Why? Why have our MPs done nothing? Why have our politicians done nothing? Because it is complicated. That's their excuse. It's complicated. It's too hard. Inequality through laziness. These are the same people who tell uh, poor people that they're scroungers. 
that they need to work harder, that they'll work shy, unwilling to do a single thing to improve this fucking country. The same people who beg and fucking congeal for your pissing vote say, give me power and I will make the country better. Unwilling to do what is right to improve poverty in this country. There are things we could do. We could do a progressive property tax. We could uh, put national insurance on landlords and speculators. We could undo the capital gains tax cut to, of 20%. We could tax the rich. We could tax the rich. That has been my show. <laughs> I hope, no, not yet. <laughs> not yet. It's the final bit of the show. Now, you'll notice that before that uh, ending, I did speak about poverty. This is your opportunity to alleviate mine. <laughs> the show is free, just not necessarily to leave. <laughs> uh, of course, you know that we're on the free festival, we look for donations. I think for a show something like this, six pound up is fantastic value for money. If you cannot afford anything, I completely understand. If you do not give, and you can afford it, do go home and die. <laughs> You've been lovely, I've been Ashley Hayden, good night. <laughs>